Today we're going to look at the northern lapwing and how to photograph them. Just happens to be my favourite bird. That's only because it was the very first species I ever identified as a child and I can remember doing it using the Ladybird Book of British Birds in the school library. This particular field, there used to be 14 lapwings nests in here which is quite remarkable in recent years because they used to be a very common species but now they're, they're quite scarce. But it, when I was a child almost every field would have lapwings nesting in there. They planted trees in this field one winter and when the lapwings turned up in February, March, two or three pairs continued to breed amongst the trees which is an unusual sight. I decided I wanted to have another go at photographing them and I wanted to replicate a picture I took when I was a teenager but on Kodachrome film which was a lapwing with an eggshell in its bill where it's just hatched. So I had to keep a, a close eye on them every morning I used to go and look at some of the eggs to see how they were getting on and as soon as you saw one with a crack in it you knew that day it was going to hatch so you've got to spend the day with the birds because uh, when they do hatch it's very quick all four eggs will hatch at this more or less at the same time and they'll walk off the first three eggs the female turned her back to me so I didn't get a picture at all but luckily with the very fourth and last egg she picked it up, turned round and posed sideways for me for a split second to allow a couple of pictures. But then the youngsters will, will walk off quite quick but I was able to get the car into the field, I've got access to it and once they walked away from the nest I got into the car and was able to follow them around using it as a mobile hide and get the, the female brooding them. And they're heading down to the scrape, a little bit of shallow water not too far away and that's where the youngsters will grow up into, into adult birds. On the same estate, a mile or so away, this is beautiful meadow, typical lapwing breeding habitat. Couldn't be better, a lovely bit of marshy ground. And I like to do birds with wide angle lenses, showing them in their habitat. So here we can see the four eggs and the bird and the, and the water behind them. It's taken with a Canon G11, which is a very small compact camera, totally silent, has a remote control socket on it, a uh, jack plug, so I can fire it by radio remote control. Once the bird has actually settled onto the nest, it's pretty boring. I'm sitting in a hide where I've got a normal telephoto lens and I'm taking pictures but there's really nothing happening and you're just waiting hoping for a bit of action and then your imagination starts to go a bit wild and you start thinking what can I do here to get something different so I think when I get out of the hide if I don't move the camera at all and I take a picture of me and a cow and then another picture of me and a cow and I keep going so long as I don't move the camera it's going to be very easy to join all these pictures up. I'm not a great one for messing about in Photoshop, it's not something I want to do, but so long as the camera's been rigid all the time, it's very easy just to paste these pictures in. So it's the sort of thing you start going a bit crazy about when you're sitting in a hide, nothing to do. One of my favourite places to photograph lapwings is the King Gussie Wildlife Park just south of Aviemore. It used to be a fantastic place for bird photography decades ago. You could photograph red shank, oyster catchers, snipe, lapwings, brown hares, curlews, all sorts of things. These days it's probably only good for lapwings but I still go. If I'm up there in the spring I'll call in. It's worth the entrance fee because the, the opportunities to do lapwing is, is fabulous got lots of humps in the ground where they can go and stand on. In the winter they're a bit prone to closing it. Slight dusting of snow and they don't open for the day. Uh, but once they've cleared the road you can go in and uh, then it's very good for doing lapwings in the snow as well. Pulling up worms. You have to overexpose a bit in these conditions about one and a half stops. If the sun was shining you might not have to overexpose at all. It's only because it's dull and with a white background. Fairly recent years I was up there 
there was a fall of snow and the light was bouncing up off the snow and the lapwings were displaying in the air. It's a very typical spring sight to see lapwings displaying and fighting and um, gamboling about in the sky. But it was, it was the lighting, it was the snow bouncing the light up that really made it special. And I gave up trying to do anything else, I just concentrated on this, just parked the car up and waited. Unfortunately they weren't fighting and displaying that often. So I was having some long waits and it was a pity I couldn't go back the following day because it was uh, exceptional circumstances. Chances of getting pictures of lapwings in falling snow within the park is pretty slim because they will close it. But not far away at Lockendor, which is just north of Aviemore, it's a super place to drive around and get pictures of birds. In the spring you can do common sandpiper, red shanks, oyster catchers, curlews, golden plover, red grouse. In the winter probably just red grouse and lapwing. But here we've got heavy snow coming down. That was taken at 1 640th of a second and this next picture 1 25th of a second. So I'll get more of a, a streaky look in the snow but I think I prefer the previous shot. And this is a composite of lapwings doing their spring courtship. It's a very difficult subject to photograph. I spent a lot of time trying to do it. If you're close enough to get a decent image size, it's a real struggle to follow them because it's such fast action. And another place that I really enjoy photographing lapwings is the Nosley Safari Park in Lancashire. It's like King Gussie in terms of it's got all ridges and humps in the grass. When the lapwings stand on those ridges, they're separated from the background, so it's very good photographically. They nest very close to the tracks, and I've got quite a few pictures there of lapwings pulling up worms. When they pull up a very long worm, you've sometimes got a few seconds, and you can put the car into gear and move a little bit closer to it to get the action. And some worms are very, very long. Back in the Midlands, in Warwickshire again, this is a lie down hide but made out of wood, only quarter of inch plywood, a very simple structure and it isn't really long enough to cover all my body, my legs stick out the back but that doesn't matter, I just cover them with a bit of cloth. I kept it short because I'm trying to keep it lightweight, I know I'm going to have to keep moving this hide backwards and forwards so I don't want it too heavy, so I try to keep the weight down so I can drag it across the ground easier. At the front the scrimming and you see the lens sticking out at the bottom, you're just getting those lovely low angle shots. The lapwings don't roost there overnight so I'm normally getting in there 4 o'clock in the morning, this is in the summer, and then uh, the lapwings turn up. Unfortunately because it's summer they're a little bit tatty, they're molting, they're immature birds, but it's nice to get them with the reflections. I've always liked birds with deep reflections underneath them. And a bit of action as they take off. And another favourite place to go and photograph lapwings is the Elmsley Reserve in Kent. From the entrance across to the visitor centre there's a very long drive across the marshes and that's a wonderful place to go and photograph wildlife pretty well at any time of year but the, sp the spring is always magical. You've got lapwings, red shanks, oyster catchers, snipe and other species too uh, that you're going to be able to photograph there but it's very good for the lapwings doing the displaying and fighting. They nest again very close to the track as you drive across and this male, you can tell it's a male because he's got a longer crest and more dark markings around the face as well. He's doing his ground scraping here, he's indicating to the female where he thinks they should lay their eggs. They might not because they'll be doing this scraping in other places as well and the female might choose a different one. But it's another super place to go and photograph my favourite bird. And that's the end.